Hi there, everybody. Welcome to today's open discussion of the lessons in the workbook of A Course in Miracles. Today, we'll pick up where we left off last week, lesson 54.3. But before we do so, let's take a moment to quiet our and center our minds, followed by a prayer taken from the workbook. Allow your breath to settle in a comfortable pattern. Breathing in and breathing out, gently and quietly, at your own comfortable pace. Direct your attention towards the empty receptive expanse that is your mind, like a clear blue sky. Notice thoughts moving in and out. Of, in and out of nowhere, like little clouds. Observe how those little puffs of thought will move past, leaving your mind totally clear and receptive. Just allow those random thoughts to move away and focus on the clear, empty vastness that is your mind. This mind was made, was created to receive the Holy Spirit's inspirations. Peace to our mind. Let all our thoughts be still. We have come here in the name of love and in the name of Jesus, who has promised that when two or more are gathered in his name, he will be there with them, and so we trust that he is here with us, guiding us and inspiring us. The following prayer is adapted from Lesson 356. Father, you promised you would never fail to answer any call your son might make to you. It doesn't matter where we are what seems to be our problem, nor what we believe we have become. We are your son, and you will answer us. The miracle reflects your love, and thus it answers us. Your name replaces every thought of sin, and who are sinless cannot suffer pain. Your name gives answer to your son because to call your name is but to call our own. Amen. Now let's bring our focus back to our presence here together in this shared space. Today we'll start with lesson 54.3, but let's look um, again first at um, paragraph five of the review introduction which assures us peace is in us. And since we are limitless, peace is everywhere. As we will see in the review lessons today, the you that this paragraph speaks of is not the tiny worldly lowercase you, but it is the son of God. And I'll share a screen so you can see what I have in front of me. Hold on. Here's paragraph five at the bottom. Can you see it? That's taken from the introduction to the review lessons that we are working on now. I'll read five. You will yet learn that peace is part of you and requires only that you be there to embrace any situation in which you are. And finally, you will learn that there is no limit to where you are so that your peace is everywhere as you are. And um, after having read that, I would like to have a look at the five, yeah, five review lessons that uh, are contained in lesson 54. And just for ease of navigation, I will read the five and then after that, we, um, I'll, I'll give you all a chance to um, share your thoughts. One, I have no neutral thoughts. Two, I see no neutral things. 
Three, I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my seeing. Four, I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my thoughts. Five, I am determined to see. If there's anything about this collection that sparked a thought that you'd like to share, please let us know and we can do that first. If I, if I don't see any hands, I'll continue sharing screen. And we'll have a look at uh, number three. And I'm just go, going to call on people to to uh, to read for us. And if you not, if I call your name and you'd rather not, then just let me know and I'll pick another name, if that's okay. Um, Andrew, would you read number three? Sure. I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my seeing. If I have no private thoughts, I cannot see a private world. Even the mad idea of separation had to be shared before it could form the basis of the world I see. Yet that sharing was a sharing of nothing. I can also a call upon my real thoughts would share everything with everyone. As my thoughts of separation called to the separation thoughts of others, so my real thoughts awaken the real thoughts in them. And the world my real thoughts show me will dawn on their sight as well as mine. Thank you, Andrew. Does anything come up for you? Uh, yes, it, it sort of stresses the importance of uh, focusing on the, the true world, the real world, or the, or the reality of spirit and decrease the focus on the physical world because uh, everyone is, everyone feels the effects in some, some way of, of everyone thought to to bring the to bring unity faster i think we need to focus on miracles really i think i think what we have to do is learn to recognize miracles not miracles that we do but every little miracle that we experience in our daily affairs like a stranger smiling that that lifts your spirits that that's a miracle uh a contagious left around the office water cooler. That's a miracle. We need to recognize that and, and just thank the Holy Spirit, you know, for letting us see that miracle. And uh, I think that'll go a long way towards shortening time. Thank, thank you. you. That's very inspiring. Also, the way you said it. I love it. Anyone else? Maggie has it. Yeah, Maggie, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I just um I was gonna say thank you, Andrew. I love that so much. And I got pumped while I was listening to you because that's a practice that I really can benefit from being reminded of often because I do intend to do it and I find that um I don't always do it. I actually got so inspired um a couple years ago when Miracle Voices, the podcast first started, and I was listening to it right from the beginning, week by week, and I thought. I mean, I want to say Judy said something like that, too, in one of those early podcast episodes, like, you know, keep track of the actual miracles that are happening, express gratitude for them. And it really spoke to me in that moment, because I just recognized that the ego does want to keep pointing out what's not working. So it doesn't like to have you focus on this thing that is actually effective. And so I bought a journal and I was like, I'm going to, this journal's just for my miracle stories. I'm going to write my own little miracles in here so that I can then go back and look at them and remind myself. And I really have not written in it um, very much, but the journals that I fill with my um, perceived concerns are very full. <laughs> so I like that you're saying it. I agree completely. And I know in my own experience, when I do remember to be grateful for the miracles that I do already experience, the ones that I recognize, you know, because I assume there's ones that I'm not even really picking up to. It does feel like it really shifts uh, my inner 
experience. Um, I mean, it's whole, it's hard to hold gratitude along with fear and those other feelings. So just for that, even it's effective. And then it's also effective in remembering to keep asking the Holy Spirit for help. If you remember all the times that it has actually really benefited you. So I like it. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful addition. Thank you. Meg. As to your um, um, journals, what came to mind is don't feel bad because we are asked to do the work, right? We're asked to look at um, the thoughts in our mind that, that block our awareness of love in our, in our lives. And journaling is, part, is, is one way of becoming aware of, of what they are, those thoughts. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's the work. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel bad for it, but I do no. think that it, um, it's, it's, uh, a little mirror for me that I can consider that I, um, kind of fail to write the miracle stories down that I really intended yeah, to. <laughs> you're sharing, you're sharing in them here. So, um, it's all, but, but, uh, good, it, then. It's all good. It's all good. And uh, what, what I like about what you and Andrew actually said is, or actually what you said, what I actually picked up is that it's so important what we think. As some of you may know, I've been a student of the Edgar Casey readings for, for, so, for many years. And one of the things, one of the key concepts in, in his readings is thoughts are things. And uh, it took me a while to actually grok, <laughs> grok that statement. But it's, you know, the Course says there are no neutral thoughts. All thoughts create form at some level. And um, yeah, so whether we, we think, um, Thoughts that are really nothing, like ego thoughts. They're still shared by others who are receptive to them. And uh, in a way, we are attacking the truth by entertaining them. So uh, perhaps that's a bit, a, bit, um, a bit strict, but that's how I, how I look at it. And so it becomes all the more important. Mental hygiene, be aware of what, what you focus on. Sharon has her hand up and her thumb up. <laughs> Go ahead, Sharon. Yes, I I agree with what you said. And uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I've been doing this practice uh, of uh, writing 10 things that I'm grateful for to these four other women since uh, 2008, when they asked me to facilitate a gratitude group where we would do this. And I said, sure. And so um, we just have done it, you know, online every morning uh, for all those years. And I think that's, uh, I don't know, going on 15 years now. And it really does set a wonderful intention for the day to sit down and write out things 10 things that you're grateful for um and i also i had never been able to journal i know it's very important but i've just never been able to do it but i started just writing little notes about what had happened during my day and then writing my 10 gratitude things to these women <laughs> i got very verbose and so anyway uh, I just want to say that's a that's a very good thing to do. I think also journaling and writing out ten things you're grateful for every morning. <laughs> good way to start the day. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. That <laughs> might inspire someone more than <laughs> more than one. Um, all right. And any any anything else on that uh, review lesson? I don't see any hands, so I'll share screen. Oh, Susan, go ahead. Yeah, this is in response to <clears throat> the lovely thoughts about uh, tools we have at our disposal to illuminate our mind about what it's thinking and doing and correct it. And um, one of the things I like to do is um, waking up in the morning is a very special time for me. I love that freaky transition, that kind of slow slide into awake. And I mean, I'm an early morning person, don't get me wrong. When I'm awake, I'm very awake once I wake up in the morning, but there's that that slow slide in to full, like, okay, here I am again. And one of the things I 
do every day, every morning before I get out of bed is I could do an instant read on what state of my mind am I in right now? Am I like ready to jump out of bed and embrace this day and everyone I see? Or am I being like Mopey Eeyore in my head? And, <laughs> and regardless of my state of mind, but I do assess it, but regardless of what it is, I then do a, a series of meta meditation, like blessings of like thinking of someone holding them in my thoughts and sending them blessings and love. And uh, it's really random people that come to mind, sometimes not even people I know. It could be a group of people somewhere in another part of the world. And what that does for me is a little bit like what you were describing for you, Sharon, where you kind of set the tone for your day by reinforcing within yourself what you value most and so it's very easy easy for um in that state to rise above any sense of eorism if you will you know and just kind of say well that's silly you know that's i can look at it right here in my hand and say that i'm not there's eor in my hand and i'm like you're gone now <laughs> and um so just to share on another method of shifting mind mm -hmm. yeah that, that's very helpful i think i'm going to try that and it, it ties in really well with with the with the principle that everything is shared yes yeah. you're actually sharing yes. your love yes. with, the, with exactly. those people that come to mind just like uh, sharon's gratitude it, she's actually literally sharing but also yeah. without that literal sharing it's still sharing oh yeah. I, completely I so yeah completely just not with <laughs> in the means of normal expression in this realm. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's still thoughts and oh, thoughts, yes. it's thoughts still are real. things. Yeah. It's more yeah. it's very real. Yeah. 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 And they're not neutral. <laughs> no. No. no, they're not neutral. No. And that's the, the, the stinky ego who wants you to believe like, I can think this thought without any harm. Maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> it's not neutral. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, let's share screen again. Um, Susan, would you like to read the next uh, review lesson four? Oh, I think she's muted. I can't hear you. I am not there. alone in experiencing the effects of my thoughts. I am alone in nothing. Everything I think or say or do teaches all the universe. A son of God cannot think or speak or act in vain. He cannot be alone in anything. It is therefore in my power to change every mind along with mine, for mine is the power of God. So I have a question on this. Just as we can bring each other up, can one egoic mind bring us all down? I think it can. I, I think we have to be very careful uh, uh, to control our negative emotions, basically, like our fear-based thoughts. Like last week, we were talking about mm -hmm. the war in Ukraine and the earthquake and uh, Turkey and Syria and uh, how horrible it is, but I think we, we just have to focus on love, send love and realize that we can't understand why those people have to experience what they are, are experiencing. Uh, you can blame, you know, I, I sometimes felt like I'm to blame for something like that. But uh, it, we just don't know. You have to. We have to develop trust in the Holy Spirit, and by we do that by exa exactly what we said earlier: recognizing miracles whenever they occur, being grateful for them, and, and acknowledging them. You know, and I'm sure there were miracles in Turkey and Syria during that earthquake too. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. 
Um, Sharon and then Maddie. Uh, I'm assuming Susan, your 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 hand was still up from the previous one, or oh, would you I'm like so to? Oh, sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. Uh, Sharon and then Maddie. Thank you. Yeah, my still. Oh, yeah, I'm not on mute. Um, I think I might have lost my train of thought a little bit. If Maggie could go first and then I could go, that oh, would be great. Okay, go ahead, Maggie. Yeah, I was going to respond to Susan. Um, I think the question was, just as we can seem to bring each other up with our thoughts, can one ego thought bring others down? And I don't know. Um, I guess I can just respond what came into my mind right away about how I think about this. So I don't know if it's really like the way that works for everybody, but for me, um, immediately your question made me think about my mother-in-law because she is somebody who is, um, if I'm just going to acknowledge the personality, the dream character as she is, like she's negative. She's typically commenting on things that she has a problem with and it's, um, something that I've, I've been with my husband almost 20 years. So for the whole time we've been together, she has triggered me, um, just in the sense that I don't really enjoy focusing on negative. Um, so there's a part of me that was inclined to think that she brings me down with her ego thoughts, with her negative thoughts. Right. But I don't, I try to hand that over, right. Because I don't know that that is a helpful way for me personally to view it. I instead think that she is illuminating for me the ego thought that is in the one mind, right? Because it's all one mind. So one ego thought in her is my ego thought. And in reality, then she's really bringing me up by bringing it to my attention because I get an opportunity then. This thing that I was, well, I'm not going to look at that in me. Oh, no, it's in her. And ego's like, yeah, she's bad. She brings you down, right? It's like no, no. She brings to me what is in my own mind so I can see it's still there. And then I can ask to choose again and see it differently. So I think, I guess maybe what we could say is there's the opportunity to feel like you're being brought down by it, or there's the opportunity to recognize that you can practice and that it's really actually a gift then. That's how I try to see it. Yeah. I don't, I don't Thank you, Maggie. that I'm perfect at yeah. that. Yeah. I agree with that completely. And this well, I, I know I'm, I'm a big proponent of don't watch TV. I mean, don't watch the news. Um, I don't watch the news and I'm happy all the time. And I, I also believe the course where it says um, nothing happens by chance and that all things work for our good. And that is the same for every one of those victims, quote, victims of whatever uh, is going on in their lives, in all of our lives. Um, we can either be victims about it, or we can know that this is, this is a path that we've chosen for whatever lesson there is in it. It is something that we have chosen. And those people have chosen it too. And I just bless their hearts and know that I, I have mine coming towards me too. I don't know what it'll be, but you know, I know that I'm, I'm walking around in a human body. So I'm in a way, my human body is vulnerable to the things of this dream, but it, but I don't have to believe it. And I don't. Thank you, Sherry. Susan, your hands up again. Go ahead. I wanted to link back to my question to the group and <clears throat> say, because again, I, I don't know the answers yet, I haven't finished, but <laughs> uh, it, it sort of struck me as I was thinking about this, um, that, you know, one, one mind healed, heals all, which is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. And then I questioned, well, what about one healthy mind? Can that make infect the whole mind and make it unhealthy. And then I thought, you know, if the unhealthy mind is simply a, a, a dream, uh, an imagination of the ego, it's not really, it's not real. So there's nothing that it does in any single person as a human form 
that could possibly have any impact one way or another because it never even really happened anyway. So that's kind of how I was thinking about it, but I haven't finished the book. And I, that's what I'm asking you guys because I can't wait till the end. I really wanted to know, but, um, <laughs> but that's kind of the direction I was going with it. I mean, I agree totally with you, Maggie, that every, every instant is an opportunity for an experiential learning and seeing, right? Everything, everything. And especially those fractious um, ones where ego is largely very evident in someone else, whether we choose to think of it that way or not, you know? But I, I developed a theory in myself that an ego-ridden mind cannot infect the whole because it's not real. So does that have any credence with you guys who finished the book? Well, I, I'm going to have to respond to that, you guys who have finished the book. Ooh, go ahead, Magni. Oh, I was just giving a thumbs up. I, yeah, I think that's oh, great, okay. Susan. Like yeah. ultimately, that is what we're being taught: is that the ego, the ego thoughts, didn't really do anything. They didn't really affect heaven. They didn't really do what we thought they did. And so, ultimately, none of them really mean anything and really affect anything in reality at all. Um. So yeah, you don't need to finish the book. You already got it. <laughs> and regarding finishing the book, I I think I must have read the book. 15 or 20 times and there's still surprises in there so and I'm not expecting to to read it again and not be surprised so um it's it's not really um a thing finishing the book is not a thing <laughs> anybody else want to add their thoughts to this current thread I'll share screen again. Um, line six in, in this uh, fourth uh, review lesson. It is therefore in my power to change every mind along with mine, for mine is the power of God. Let that sink in. And still, you know, this is this is um, it's it is said to be a course for individual. What what's the word again? And, um, it's it's a course for self study, a self study course. But it's everything but self study. Anyway, uh, go ahead, uh, Derek. <laughs> I was just noticing how my ego. I think it was uh, somebody on one of our meetings before said, as I'm reading the course, my ego is reading the course right along with it and looking for ways to use it, especially if I get too enlightened. It's like, you know, how can I twist that phrase? And so when I was reading, it is therefore in my power to change every mind along with mine. I can see my tendency and I've had it in the past and it probably still happens now to focus on my course practice or focus on my meditation and sort of have this, I didn't don't realize it's egoic, but in, re, in retrospect, it's this sense of Derek is doing this practice that is bringing more light into my consciousness. And since we're all one mind, it's, you know, bringing light to the entire ego mind and helping be part of the solution. And this is important that I do this and more people should do this that they don't. And I should do it more. And there's a lot of shooting that comes in and there's a lot of trying <laughs> hard that comes in. And, and there's a sense of responsibility that the little I takes on a statement like that, you know, and I need to like notice that and let that all go because if I'm tuning in the light that's that I truly am that's coming through me that is impacting all the ego mind and bringing what it's like that's not Derek that's not me that is the true 
the uh, true self that we are expressing mm -hmm. itself. So anyway, I just, yeah. I wanted to share that my ego is trying to sneak in again. Yeah, yeah. I, I, no, I, I think we, we can all relate. And it's, uh, it's making way, making way for that to, to, to happen, allowing that to happen, yeah. But you articulated it well, thank you. Um, anybody else would like to share on that paragraph? Okay, let's share screen again. Um, let's ask uh, Keith, would you read five? I'd be glad to. I am determined to see. Recognizing the shared nature of my thoughts, I am determined to see. I would look upon the witnesses that show me the thinking of the world has been changed. I would behold the proof that what has been done through me has enabled love to replace fear, laughter to replace tears, and abundance to replace loss. I would look upon the real world and let it, re let it teach me that my will and the will of God are one. Any thoughts that come to mind upon reading this, Keith? Uh, not right now, no. Anybody, thank you for reading. Anybody else? I'm going to read it again. Sorry. I, I just, oh, there's uh, Derek. Go ahead. Yeah, just one little thought I had is that I the whole time I've been on and off studying the course for 20 years and this the and I think the course even addresses it somewhere but the wholeheartedness with which I can say I am determined to see or beyond all else I am determined to see um it's my wholeheartedness is not there much or most of the time. It's sort of just a sentence to me, an intellectual thing to say. Um, every once in a while, I, I really get touched with my course practices and, and the love and the healing. And it, it like means the world to me. And then that feeling goes away, you know, and, and I'm not so determined to see. And then I have years where I, I pretty much just get caught up back in my life and, you know, the course studies go away and all that stuff. Um, but I'm so I'm just kind of forgiving myself for not being the most determined to see, given the, the responsibility that could be presumed from this, um, forgiving myself for not being as committed or as truly wholeheartedly uh, wanting this good or this truth as I quote unquote think I should should be. Shooting, shooting. I'm shooting myself again. <laughs> okay, Susan, go ahead. Okay, I have a question on a meaning thing. The second sentence, it says, I would look upon the witnesses that show me the thinking of the world has been changed. So mm -hmm. I understand that. My question is, do we not also look upon those who are not witnesses to the change? Um, are they not also our brothers that we wish to bring into the change? Does anybody, oh, okay, go ahead, Peggy. Three participants. Oh, hold on. I'll stop share and I'll, I can see who those three are. Maggie and Derek would like to answer. Go ahead, Maggie. Yeah, you know, I maybe others will have a different perspective on this, Susan, but as I read that sentence, I don't think of it as the witnesses being um, my brothers. Um, the witnesses that show me the thinking of the world has been changed in my experience come in a lot of different ways. And it, some of it is things that I feel, um, things that I am seeing and experiencing the way that I might go into a space with somebody that was triggering me and that I've been asking for help seeing differently. And now I do see them differently. That's a witness to me. So internal. 
Yeah, yeah, but I, I'd be interested to know what Derek and others think as well. Go ahead, uh, Derek. Yeah, uh, definitely the, the internal that Maggie was talking about. Um, I'm thinking for myself, in addition to that, uh, as far as the external goes, um, this I would look upon the witnesses that show me that thinking of the world has changed. I do notice that it's happening a lot more in my life. I, I, it feels like the last couple of years. Um, I'll be in the store and and one person in line will let the next person through or somebody will do some loving gesture like noticeably these acts of you know random acts of kindness have started i've started to notice them a lot and people let me in on the freeway and i'm noticing people letting a lot of other people in when people are trying to merge like that's predominantly what i'm noticing and so i feel like I, I would see those witnesses and lo and behold, in the external world, they they're catching my attention a lot more. And I still do see people cutting people off or people that won't let me in every once in a while or or, or a scuffle at the grocery store or something. Um, so I still see those and hold those in, in sort of loving compassion when I can. Um, so I don't think this statement is mutually exclusive. But I, I only saw the, the proofs that this ego world sucked for most of my life. And now that I've shifted, uh, I, I see a lot more witnesses of just beautiful acts of kindness mm -hmm. out there. So that for me, that's maybe what they're talking about a little bit. Thank you, Derek. Uh, Sharon? Oh, you're muted, Sharon. Okay, sorry about that. So where it says, I would behold the proof that what has been done through me has enabled love to replace fear, laughter to replace tears, and abundance to replace loss. All I got to say is, I'm like, what, what's been done through me? I didn't know anything had been done through me. This is, this is the type of stuff in the course that I have no idea really what that means at a visceral level. And I just kind of keep going back up to that thought. You don't need to, you don't need to just, just hang with me. I feel like Holy Spirit is saying, hang with me. I'll get you through it. And, and I'm, I'm comforted that I don't need to really grok what this says. As long as I understand the very beginning of the book where it says nothing real can be threatened Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. <laughs> so, but I, I have no idea what this means. None. All right. Oh, I'll share screen again. So, so we can look at it again. Um, yeah. So that's sentence three and you read sentence four, right? Uh, regarding sentence three, I wanted to add a, a thought. It makes me think of what Andrew sh shared at the beginning of our session, that we um, need to decide to want to look on miracles and not focus on the negative thinking. And that's, I think, what this sentence three actually uh, means to me. I would look wow. upon the witnesses that show me the thinking of the world has been changed in, in the direction of miracles. And then uh, what you were saying, um, Sharon, sentence four, I would behold the proof that what has been done through me has enabled love to replace fear, laughter to replace tears, and abundance to replace loss. If you read the me, notice the tiny me that's sitting on the couch right now uh, in front of a, of a painting with yellow flowers, but you, you think of me as the son of God, that all the good that has already happened all the, the perfection that has already been extended and extend, expanded, then maybe becomes a bit more um, relatable. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess that boils back down to how much I can see myself as, uh, you know, Christ-like. I'm getting there. I'm working on no, it. No, no, <laughs> no. I don't. I don't. See, I don't think you would actually have to see yourself as Christ-like. Just know that <laughs> that it, that that's the case, and yeah, a lot yeah. has been done by the Christ, and so that's what this. Right. What this. So it's right. sort of like an encouragement. 
that's yeah, how I, I see it yeah, as an encouragement. Yeah. And 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 I would in you know in sentence three, four, and five, they all start with I would. I think it's 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 would in a different type of meaning, uh, more like I want to, I would like to, or I I, I decide to. Mm -hmm. So I decide to look upon the witnesses. I decide to behold the proof, and I decide to look upon the real world. So. Right. Anyway, that's just a thought. Thank you. Anybody Can else? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Derek. Yeah. Um, I just uh, thought of one possible interpretation of the I would behold that what is done through me has allowed um, love to replace fear. Um, I was thinking about how, and Maggie can probably speak to this uh, at length, being a therapist, but I, I can um, think of times when, and when I've perceived a friend who's talking to me as, uh, you know, being in pain or trouble, and I, Derek, am trying to, you know, help them see it differently, or I'm trying to help them feel better, or it's like Derek is trying to make things better. I've noticed that energy. But what happened to me last night when I was talking to a friend who's who's deeply in debt and she was very in fear around the situation in her life and she was sharing it with me, I, I didn't feel triggered and I didn't feel the need to go, oh, sweetie, don't look at it that way. Oh, you you know, think about this or focus on gratitude. Or, I, I didn't have any urge to fix or change her or anything like that. I was just listening and a thought popped into my head. And it made me chuckle. And she goes, what, 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 what are you chuckling about? And I go, I just, the thought was like, I, I so believe in you that you are going to overcome this. And the fact that it is such a large dollar amount, it is going to be an absolutely hugely impactful story of, of success, if you will, uh, for all the people that you minister to in the future that are similarly challenged right now. I'm like, this This just struck me like, when you knock this thing out of the park, it is going to be just the, the story that you need or that spirit needs to speak through you to others that need to hear that. And I go, so way to set up, you know, this, 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 per, this perfect challenge. But it just came spontaneously. And she like went from being all fearful to just bursting out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> because, oh my god, I never thought of it that way. And yeah. I feel like that was like sort of a spontaneous yeah. love thought that came through and said just the right thing at the right time. It didn't come from me. It wasn't my idea. Yeah. Yeah. But love definitely replaced fear. And it was, I'd say it was done through me. So perhaps that's yeah. a practical. Yeah, problem. yeah, yeah. That's a great example. It's 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 a great example of this isn't happening to me, it's happening for me. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> That's a saying I, I I heard somewhere and I, I keep keep saying it. it's actually a bit that, but I like that. Yeah. It's it's a bit um what's it? What's the word? Uh, humbling to to know that I have to say it so often to myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andrew, your hand is up. Go ahead. Yeah, that story of uh, Derek's just reminded me that th things that we think might be bad or like a bad luck or a curse against us might be uh, one of some of our, our biggest blessings. And, and that's why it's important not to judge things. I mean, the, the Course tells us not to yeah. judge. We just have to uh, ex you know, accept what comes to us and and love every minute of it, and that's the key to happiness. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Because <laughs> we don't know, we don't know. Yeah, and but the thing to remember though with that is that you have to trust from the place of trust. If you're not in an inner place of trust, and you tell yourself, "I've got to trust this," then you're uh, trusting with your ego mind, and that's not going to work. You have to first yeah. be in a place of peace and trust and alignment, and then you can say, okay, I trust. And then, and then you can call upon it. You can call on trust to work for you. At least that's how it works in my experience. 
Um, all right. Anybody else? No, no other, no other hands. Uh, Derek, your hand was still up, but I think that was from the previous time. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to share screen and then um, I'm going to go to. How do I do that? All right. Uh, go to. I want to go to. Um, to the site. Hold on, but I have to call up the site first. The site with the, this one. Okay, lesson 55, right? We're going to start lesson 55. And now I can call it up. Sorry, that took me a while. Uh, here it is. There you go. All right. Um, Ardith, would you read the, the, the titles of lesson 55? You um, would unmute yourself. Maybe she's just getting a cup of coffee. All right, uh, Maggie, would you read the titles of of this um, this review lesson fifty five? Yes. So lesson fifty five includes lesson twenty one. I am determined to see things differently. Lesson 22, what I see is a form of vengeance. 23, I can escape from this world by giving up attack thoughts. 24, I do not perceive my own best interests. And 25, I do not know what anything is for. Let's start with the first one. Unless someone sees a connecting thought for all, all five, I, I don't readily see it, but um, would you read uh, 21, please, Maggie? Sure. So I am determined to see things differently. What I see now are but signs of disease, disaster, and death. This cannot be what God created for his beloved son. The very fact that I see such things is proof that I do not understand God. Therefore, I also do not understand his son. What I see tells me that I do not know who I am. I am determined to see the witnesses to the truth in me, rather than those which show me an illusion of myself. Any thoughts, Maggie? Mm, I suppose witnesses there again <laughs> again I do still have the experience internally as I read it of thinking of um the own evidence of miracles in me the own evidence of my own shift in thinking um but yeah I really I think that this is some of the stuff that I used to have a tough time with um just a statement like what I see now are but signs of disease, disaster, and death. Um, and I don't understand anything then. It, that it's just so um, well pervasive, right? It's, it's tough initially, but as I read them now, it's just interesting to get to reflect on how much more I really fully believe that and um, have had more witnesses to that within myself. So it's kind of, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a nice perspective to be able to see that uh, shift in my own yeah, life. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Derek, your hands up. Yeah, I'm sort of uh, still after 20 years kind of struggling and grokking with what I see now are but signs of dis disease, disaster and death. And I'm kind of trying to sort out this level one, level two confusion. I'm you know, if I wasn't in the ego mind, if I was in my right mind and I saw somebody with cancer, would it be that I just didn't relate to them as their body at all? So the notion of calling something cancer, much less judging it as a bad thing called a disease would not even come into my mind because I don't even see them as a body or is this talking about the uh, dream world judgmental labels that I would put on it if I was in my right mind would not be a negative label. So it wouldn't be disease. It would be perhaps described as, you know, this tool that the soul is using through the body to have a change of mind. So 
I don't know if this is talking about reframing things at level two, where we're at, at the, at the body level, or if this is about seeing people as not even bodies, period. Uh, I'd be curious if anybody had any thoughts about that. Because it's hard for me to look at, it. there's a person with cancer, there's a person with cancer, there's a person with cancer. Even if I'm not judging it as bad, how else am I going to articulate that bodily condition if I'm thinking about body? I don't know. That's, that's all I got. Thank you, Derek. And Maggie? I will speak from my own experience as I think that is most beneficial. But um, yeah, I don't know that we're being asked to deny that there are bodies that seem to have cancer in the dream world, Derek, you know, right? Like that's kind of, it's just denial. Like we've been told um, denying the body, denying the experience of bodies isn't really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and then your question, well, then am I to just not see them as a body? I mean, if you can just do that, like, let me know. <laughs> but my, so I think then, right, like what, what I grok is terms of like what we're being asked to do is to recognize that I see a body that seems to have cancer. I mean, even if it's a seemingly healthy body, I'm still seeing death because I'm seeing bodies, I'm seeing separation. Yeah. And so I think the task is um, just to recognize what you're currently seeing and ask for help seeing it differently and and to just just live there, just live <laughs> in that space. I don't know. You know, people talk about, you know, still being level two while being um, in the right mind. And I, and I, I don't know. I, I don't know what that's like. You, you just poof at some point here and then there's no bodies to be seen at all. I, I get the sense, like Sharon was saying earlier, if I start to try and ask those questions internally, it's Holy Spirit is like, you can't understand that. Don't do that. <laughs> Yeah. I don't care. Go there. Just hang with me. Hang with me with the understanding that you do have. And um, like I said, that is just to not deny what I'm currently seeing, but uh, also recognize that I'm being told it's not true. And so please help me then. <laughs> so helpful. Thank you so much. So helpful. You're welcome. All right. Yeah, I don't have a, a ready answer that was well well articulated, Maggie. I remember hearing um, a person explaining and what they were seeing. There was a person who was supposedly, you know, on the path to awakening a bit further along the road than most of us. And they were actually seeing shafts of light. And they were looking on a on a on a war scene, you know, with, with fighting and I don't know. And instead of people fighting and getting hurt, they, they, they saw beams of light momentarily. I mean, not, not continuously, but um, as, as an indication of, their, of the reality of the people involved really was. And I thought that was interesting that the comment stayed with me for what it's worth. I'm sharing it here. Um, all right, number two. Okay, there's a Susan. Go ahead, Susan. Okay, so in response to that fascinating story you just told, um, I don't claim to be, I'm just trying to get on the first rung of the ladder. So let's be clear about that. <laughs> you are. You are. But, but anyway, that's, that's I'm it on. <laughs> but um, I did have an experience where um, it was the coolest thing ever, where um, a friend's husband had just passed and I got, I saw this very clear image of multiple lights moving up and moving down. Like, and I, I it was like, and it was like all over the place. And I realized these are spirit body, spirit bodies rising and spirit bodies re returning. You know, it was just the most, I'm getting goosebumps. Um, so I love that story that that person saw the light of the spirits on the field of battle where the only thing that was real was the light of their spirit. Yeah. 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 So thank you for sharing that. That was really okay. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Shishar. And thank you for sharing your story of that um, passing of that friend. All right. Share screen again. 
do we have time for another? No, let's let's close it here. Um, all right. If that's all right with everybody, we've just got got a couple of minutes, and then I'll I'll read a closing prayer, and I'll pull it up so you can read along with me or close your eyes, whatever feels more comfortable. It's from chapter. 31, section 8, paragraph 9. Let us be glad that we can walk the world and find so many chances to perceive another situation where God's gift can once again be recognized as ours. And thus will all the vestiges of hell, the secret sins and hidden hates be gone, and all the loveliness which they concealed, appear like lawns of heaven to our sight, to lift us high above the thorny roads we traveled on before the Christ appeared. Hear me then, my brothers, here enjoying with me. God has ordained I cannot call in vain, and in his certainty I rest content. For you will hear and you will choose again. And in this choice is everyone made free. Amen. Thank Amen. you all for your presence and for your participation. Oh, thank you, Johanna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good seeing everybody. <laughs>